Hey guys. So, as you may have guessed from the title, I have made a reflow oven. Um, this is the bad boy here from uh, good old Aldi. Um, about 20 pounds, 20 euros, something like that. Um, and this was recommended by quite a few people out there. Um, and so I thought I would take the plunge. And then came the difficult part of how to actually use the thing. So um, I know others out there have done just the regular set it with temperature, do it by eye and that kind of thing. Um, I don't like anything that's a judgment call so I wanted something that was automated. Um, so at that point I started looking to see what was out there. Um, and there's been a few projects going on for a while um, on GitHub and, and other places. Um, and then some of those look pretty impressive. Um, we just scouting around, but I was lured in by the visual whiz bang um, of the Reflow Master by Sion, um, which I'll put a link down below. Um, and that's a fantastic product, and I know he's used it a lot himself at his building. Um, I could have just ordered one of those, but one thing I have been working on is trying to pick up my design skills in um, Easy EDA and doing some more um, board designs and schematics. So. What I've done is kind of a homage to um, Sion's Reflow Master. So all the actual clever work and um, all the intelligence and everything has been done by Sion, so I completely hold my hands up there. But what it was great is that's what the fantastic thing about open source is that I was able to have a look at his schematics and his code and everything he'd published um, and just see how he'd put it together. Um, and this is probably the most complicated PCB I've done. Um, like I say, I am very conscious that it's not my design as such but um, there was some design elements I had to do so uh, the, the first part was to um, look at what components CN had used and then what I wanted to do was then see if I could take it um, use similar components but a different slant and a bit more DIY easy for myself to build as well so um, so I fill them down here just this is probably where I would use the reflow oven um, I haven't really got a suitable space in my office upstairs um, and if things go bang, <laughs> there's a door there we can throw it outside. Um, so what I'll do is I'll switch to the overhead in the office and we can have a look at this in a bit more detail. So let's take a closer look at um, what I ended up coming up with. So if I just zoom us in here a bit. Okay. So, oh, there we go. <laughs> See, I call it the... The unexpected reflow bodge, um, and as it turned out, it did need a few bodges. So, I'll put a, um, an image up of, of, of Sion's design, um, but what I did was I went through the schematic and looked at all the components he had. Um, the main component, the, the core of it, is a SAMD21 chip, um, and then he's got his own uh, USB um and then there's a screen and the various buttons and lots of service mount resistors and a transistor for the um, the fan. So what I did was uh, I then looked through the um, to try and find some through hole variants of those um, and, and came up with a few things. And so the first one that was most difficult was the SAMD21 board. Um, and then I discovered this, um, which is a board from Wemos and it's a kind of um, Arduino-esque form factor board um, designed for going on breadboard but then I did discover that I needed some of the pins off the ICSP header um, so what I did was I then mounted the IC ICSP header and if you're going to focus please focus no come on come on there you go so I took the ICSP header and I soldered that on the bottom of the board. And then the next problem was then just to design a part, a um, custom part in Easy ADA, which then corresponded to this. Um, and thankfully I did get it right and it um, slots in there nicely as you can see. Um, one of the ways I checked that was to design the schematic and the, um, the parts, sorry, um, and then put it on the board, lay things out, and then I printed that on paper, one-to-one um, -one scaling. Um, that was a good suggestion from uh, Sion. Um, and then just basically lined it up, and thankfully the measurements worked out, and there you go. So 
that worked out nicely. Um, so what I did was when I came to use it was it was a well, it's going to be a permanent solution, but I was worrying about breaking the Sandy 21, which I thought I had at one point. Um, I just used a bunch of headers. Um, I had these ones that you had to snip down to size, which I hate doing, but um, you know, it's only uh, for myself, so that worked fine. Um, and then, as you can see, oh, we're upside down. So what we've got, um, we've got the thermocouple connector here. Um, we've got the buzzer connector and the fan connector and the fan connector goes through transistor to switch that um, so to get your 5 volts going through and then also just as a to try and assist I broke out some of the extra pins um, like muzzy um, clock reset and such like out of here and in the end those were important it was something for to troubleshoot um, the the thermistor I used um, was one of these little control boards because again this is something that Sion baked into his board. Um, this is what actually caused me issues in the end. I was a bit silly, I didn't realise that a Max 6675 and the Max 31855 weren't interchangeable. Even though, as you'll see on this board, um, that, they're both listed there, which is a bit confusing. Um, so the, but those are wired up slightly different in a Max 1, Max 6675 uses SCK um, and some other pins and that isn't the case um, for the 31855. So I ran into issue, so what I ended up, I did have both in the end, um, so I used the 31855 and then I had to place a bodge wire um, going to pin 12. Yeah, um, which then goes to clock that's used on the board. Um, so that was the first issue. Um, once I corrected that, um, and you noticed I had to score a couple of links here. But once I did that, I started getting some readings, and that was fantastic. So what I'll do is I'll show you. I'll power them up. Pull everything back in. I really do need to make a case for this but I was just keen to do a video and it's sat there for a while and I haven't done the case yet so I thought what the heck I will do this there you go and we get nothing let's try again I think the screen was partially unplugged when I did that let's see if it boots up there we go, that was just my fault. And like I say, and I'll reiterate again, any of the intelligence and everything else goes to Sion. Uh, and that was one of the reasons I stuck with Sam D21. It just uses his code and just uploads um, straight into the, um, into the board. And it just makes life so much easier. I'm not reinventing the wheel. Sion's a far better programmer than I. So that's one of the reasons I stuck. So then I've mimicked the, the layout of the buttons. Um, and yeah, it's great. Everything's in there. Um, you know, changing the offset and everything like that. So yeah, I'm not going to dwell too much on the code because that's not mine. That's Sion's fantastic work. Um, so yeah, so then the next issue, once I started getting readings in, and you'll see that it's quite nice in the UK and it actually is about 24 degrees in this room, um, was the thermocouple. Um, the ones that came with the two I have are, are these type. Um, and I don't know what these are actually designed for, whether it's a forge or something like this or whatever. But man, they did give a reading, but they were so slow to respond. So um, Sion gives an oven check, and it basically kicks things off and it warms up to 90 degrees in 90 seconds. Um, and I knew the oven was getting there, but it just never reported it. I and mean, it was so frustrating. Um, I'll tell you what, I will do that because that's starting to annoy me. Um, yeah, and so I had to ditch this type. Um, I then did have others from some 3D printers. Um, this guy refused to work as well, um, just to be annoying. Um, 
in the end what I did use was a one that came with my multimeter and that worked pretty well um, and maybe I should have just stuck with that but then I did go out and I spent some big bucks on this one and the idea was that it um, I can mount that inside the case I don't need to try and find a, a nut that will fit this this is frustrating um, but you'll see there that the actual sensor is right at the end the tip um, but it's shielded from the outside and that's another problem I had with grounding um, and the readings that I was getting were just totally false unless it was um, correctly grounded to the case so since this is metal on metal on the back of the reflow oven um, what I basically ended up doing was it's a metal braided cable on the outside um, and I just sold a small jumper wire onto here um, and then onto the ground portion of the board so everything's connected ground wise um, and that was one of the common things when I searched for thermocoupling and incorrect readings um, I, maybe, I know there's a few different types so I think I could try another one but this one works so I'm quite happy um, the rest of the board was done pretty similar um, in the respect of the relay um, this is something where you just always got to be careful and I'll, I should have done this at the start of the video but if you're doing this just make sure you're comfortable with wiring um, of AC electrics and you, you do have to just be extremely careful um, this is the type of thing you'll end up using as a solid state relay this is actually a um, DC relay so not this one but you want to use an AC relay um, I'll put a link down in the description um, mine's actually inside the um, oven at the moment and I mounted mine inside the side of it um, something I'm going to keep an eye on the temperatures um, but that's where mine lives currently and then the other thing to consider as well is the temperature that it gets at in the control box at the side um, I know Sion had posted up the video showing the, the temperature of the air that he was channeling through when he, in his fan um, so one thing I did do was to go and get some 2.5mm squared but um, heat shielded cable um, and that's what I've used in the side so that's just going to prevent any wires melting and any potential um, damage and fires and such like going forward so yeah so that's largely it really but I just wanted to show you know what you can achieve and that I'm not um, as clever as some of the guys out there but I just in the beauty of open source I was able to take Sion's project um, see why he did things and have a look and realise and like, okay put that resistor there um, and it was just a great learning exercise and that's what the whole thing has been really and um, if I want this to work the better solution would be to go and buy one off Sion because it is a polished product and it works really well um, this is kind of a poor imitation but it has been a great exercise for me and like I say it's one of the, it's not super complicated it hasn't got you know I haven't went for the Sam D21 straight on there or anything like that that's if, <laughs> somewhere down the line for myself and uh, I'm not sure if I'll ever get to that point but you know we can see but yeah so great learning exercise it was fantastic to see it um, actually working and, and heating the oven up and um, so yeah so so just watching guys um, and you know I hope this is maybe if it's a help for anyone or any inspiration um, you know if people want to um, say any more about it you know please do let us know um, but it's just to say that you know go try these things look at look what's out there in github and other places um, that's the beauty of open source um, just watching uh, please feel free to like subscribe and uh, thanks